Hey guys, this is Bhavya here and welcome to the Med Concepts with Bhavya. Welcome or welcome back to the Med Concepts with Bhavya. Today we are going to talk about the femur bone anatomy video part 4. Usually we always have three parts of a bone video but this time we are having four because the last time in the part 3 video I couldn't cover up clinical anatomy and I decided to make it in another part because the muscle attachments of the femur were very vast and I thought let's not complicate more by adding the clinical anatomy. So this is gonna be a 10 minutes video explaining you the clinical anatomy of the femur bone and this is gonna be the last video of the femur bone anatomy video series. After this, we are going to start with the hip bone anatomy. So, without any further ado, let's get into the video. As I already mentioned, we are going to talk about the clinical anatomy of the femur bone. And since we don't need this bone here, I would be removing this out of the frame of our video. Today, we are going to talk about the clinical bone anatomy with the help of the notes that I made. And here we are going to see three clinical anatomies in total this is number one and then we have two things which come into the number two point so let's get into the depth of each of the clinical anatomies of the femur bone so here the first condition that we are going to see is the avascular necrosis of the femoral head now the first question that arises is what is avascular necrosis avascular necrosis is the damage of the femur bone or any bone due to the decrease in the blood supply in the area or in the bone okay so what happens here is in the femoral head due to decrease in the blood supply there is avascular necrosis that is the damage at the femoral head so the first thing that we need to know is the blood supply of the femoral head there are three branches or three arteries that supply the femoral head area out of which there are two main supplies and then one is the partly supply or the partial supply. So the two main supplies are the retinacular artery and the branches of the medial femoral artery. Okay, so the retinacular artery and the branches from the medial femoral artery are the main supplies to the femoral head of the femur whereas there is a partly supply from the obturator arteries branch. So these are the three main blood supplies that we see in the femoral head now what happens here is due to the intracapsular fracture of the neck of the femur the question is what is intracapsular fracture intracapsular fracture means the fracture within the capsule of the joint that the femur may be forming with the hip bone right we know that the hip joint is formed by the femoral head and the hip bone exactly so there will be a capsule over that area so there is a fracture in the intracapsular region of the hip joint in the region of the neck of the femur which causes the injuries to these arteries because these arteries are supplying the area near the neck of the femur and the head of the femur so when there is fracture in that region that fracture will cause injuries or lesion of these arteries Thus, there will be reduced blood supply and there will be avascular necrosis of the femoral head. So, this is the first clinical anatomy that we see. Now, let's go into the next clinical anatomy. The second condition that we see here is, the first one would be the fracture of the femoral shaft. And then the another one that we see here is the bucket handle tear of the medial meniscus. Now, talking about the first one, that is the fracture of the femoral shaft. This usually occurs in people below the age of 16 years. So these people will be called kids. Okay, so this occurs in kids below the age of 16 years. Whereas bucket handle tear of the medial meniscus, it occurs between the ages of the 14 to 40 years. Any of you must be thinking what is meniscus? So we have the medial meniscus and the lateral meniscus in the knee joint which we would study in depth when we study about the knee joint anatomy. For now you just remember medial meniscus. Okay, so there will be a tear of the medial meniscus and another condition that we saw was the fracture of the femoral shaft, right? Now why does these two conditions occur? What is the cause of these two conditions is? Accident or tripping causing forced medial rotation of the thigh and leg during the fall. 
Okay, let me break this sentence and explain this to you clearly. There will be accident or tripping. Tripping means falling. So, when there is accident or falling, there will be forced medial rotation at the thigh and the leg. Now, what is forced medial rotation is? First of all, what is medial rotation? Medial rotation means the movement of a joint or an axis towards the center of the body. We have studied this in basic anatomy, right? So, normal medial rotation occurs while you move. But when there is forced medial rotation during accident or during fall, this will cause a large amount of force to act on the bone. Thus, there will be fracture that is breaking at the femoral shaft or there will be tear of the accessory structures like the medial meniscus. So that is all about the clinical anatomy. I hope this is clear. First one, we saw the avascular necrosis that is the reduced blood supply causes damage to the bone. And then we saw the arteries that supply the femoral head and then we saw the cause. Okay. And the second one is we see fracture of the femoral head and then the tear of the medial meniscus due to forced medial rotation which causes very large amount of force to act on the bony surfaces. So that is all about the clinical anatomy. I hope this was clear and I hope there is no doubts left. This was the last part of the femur bone anatomy series and now in the next video we would be going for the hip joint anatomy. If there is any doubt or any queries comment down in the comment section below. Also give this video a thumbs up, share, support and subscribe. Until the next video stay safe. Stay home.